without taking more time i will now request my first speaker who i am very honored by his presence he is the former ambassador to the us and uh, he has come a long way from washington to join us here today sir please you have the floor thank you very much um, I come to this event as a Pakistani friend of the Baluch people and in the belief that human rights are universal and their violations should not be ignored out of misplaced patriotism. Uh, we all admire Europeans, Americans, even Israelis who criticize the violation of human rights by their own governments and we believe that they show moral courage. I am one of those who believes that the world would be a better place if Indians spoke out against human rights violations in Kashmir and other parts of uh, 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 other territories that are under Indian control, Myanmar's leaders speak up when their army deprives the Rohingya of their life and dignity, and Pakistanis start recognizing that injustices against the Baluch, Sindhis, Mahajirs, and religious minorities must end. I am a Pakistani, and I want to see a civilian, democratic, politically stable, and economically strong Pakistan that guarantees rights to all its component ethnicities and nationalities, a Pakistan that is at peace with itself and its neighbors. It is tragic that in Pakistan, the notion of human rights has been politicized in a manner in which Pakistanis are happy to advocate talks with globally recognized terrorists, such as the Afghan Taliban, and speak out for the Muslims of Kashmir and Myanmar, which of course we should, but take a very intransigent position when it comes to engagement with the leaders and people of Baluchistan. These are our people, and we must continue to talk to them and talk of the violations of human rights against them. We should not stay silent over the well-documented atrocities against the Baluch people in Pakistan. I do not support foreign intervention, nor am I an advocate of secession. But I understand the sentiments of the Baluch, some of whom are now completely disillusioned with Pakistan and have started asking for freedom. Instead of using force against the Baloch, it would be best to recognize the sentiments and aspirations of the Baloch people. It is also important to engage in dialogue with them, which is why I am here at the invitation of a major political organization of Baluchistan. <coughs> Last year, Pakistan's Federal Minister for Ports and Shipping, Mir Hasil Bizenju, acknowledged that, quote, if a referendum were held in Balochistan today, the militants would win, unquote. He added that there will be no referendum, <coughs> implying that the status quo would prevail through force. The transformation of erstwhile East Pakistan into Bangladesh should be a lesson in the limits of military power in building a nation or keeping a country together. The Baloch and the East Pakistani Bengalis were among the first to disagree with the West Pakistani security establishment and its perception of Pakistan and its vision of Pakistan. Starting from the 1970s, the Baloch have been fighting for more autonomy within Pakistan. Their struggle has been brutally suppressed by the Pakistani state. Unfortunately, some of them have engaged in militancy and have given some justification uh, to the military in its actions. Even now, Baluchistan is geographically the largest of Pakistan's four provinces, but it is the least developed. Uh, according to the latest census, Pakistan's population stands at 207 million, with Baluchistan's population at only 12.3 million. Within that population, the number of Baluch has declined as a total of the total percentage than before. It seems that the Baluch are facing a demographic genocide. Their numbers are being diluted by the process of counting them less or through an enumeration process that does not recognize their actual numbers. Pakistan is urbanizing quickly with 40% urbanization. 
but 75% of Balochistan's population remains rural. Pakistan's overall literacy rate is 58%, 69% for males, 45% for females. But Balochistan is at 41%, 24% female, 56% male. Literacy figures for ethnic Baloch are even worse. According to a report on Pakistan's multi-dimensional poverty index compiled in 2016 with the support from UNDP Pakistan and the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative, University of Oxford, nearly 39% of Pakistanis live in multi-dimensional poverty, with the highest rates of poverty in the federally administered tribal areas and Balochistan. The report found that over two-thirds of people in FATA, 73%, and Balochistan, 71%, live in multidimensional poverty. According to that report, over two-thirds of people in Balochistan, 71%, uh, uh, live in multidimensional poverty. And uh, the, increase, uh, the decrease in multidimensional poverty is slowest in Balochistan, where poverty levels have increased in several districts in Balochistan as well as Sindh during the past decade. Urban employment, unemployment stands at 12.5% in Balochistan compared to <coughs> countrywide average of 5.9% in 2015. Balochistan provides 40% of Pakistan's energy needs and 36% of its gas production along with minerals. Yet, 46% of households in Balochistan have no electricity. Only 25% of villages have rural electrification. On top of this, the Baluch are deprived of their political rights and are targeted with state violence and oppression. The latest U.S. Department of State Human Rights reports for 2015 and 2016 speak of politically motivated killings of Baluch nationalists in Baluchistan. The State Department wrote, report quoted the testimony before the Senate of Pakistan Standing Committee on Human Rights uh, by Baluchistan's Frontier Corps Deputy Inspector General for Investigations and Crime who declared that 1,040 per, 1 persons had been killed in Balochistan in 2015-2016, although he insisted that there was, quote, no evidence of security agency involvement in the killings, most evidence pointed out otherwise. The South Asia terrorism, uh, terrorism Portal recorded that journalists, teachers, students, and human rights defenders were also targeted by state and non-state actors in Balochistan. As of November 20, at least 244 civilians were killed in Balochistan in 2016, compared with 247 during 2015. The State Department's Country Report on Human Rights in Pakistan for 2015 and 2016 stated, and I quote, there were kidnappings and forced disappearances of persons from various backgrounds in nearly all areas of the country. Some police and security forces reportedly held prisoners in Cumunicado and refused to disclose their location. Human rights organizations, this is the court, the court continues. Human rights organizations reported many Baloch nationalists as among the missing. The International Voice for Baloch Missing Persons listed 156 individuals in its online database of missing persons who had been abducted during the year 2015 alone. The Human Rights Commission of Pakistan listed 107 individuals as victims of enforced disappearances in Balochistan in the first nine months of 2015. The Voice of Baloch Missing Persons issued a report in August 2015 detailing the discovery of mutilated corpses in Noshki and Kalad districts of Balochistan and what the organization termed the inadequate measures taken to preserve and identify the bodies. Uh, NGO statistics uh, were cited by the State Department in its report that the total number of persons who had disappeared could be greater than 19,000. The report also noted that the Balochistan Home Ministry had officially acknowledged the detention of 8,326 suspects in the province between December 2014 and September 15, 2015. According to the State Department report again, during the year the VB MP claimed to have records of 157 mutilated bodies found in Balochistan and of 463 missing persons. Official Home Ministry of Balochistan figures indicated that authorities had recovered 
164 bodies uh, in Balochistan during the year. According to a 2014 report by the Balochistan government's Home and Tribal Affairs Department, over 800 bodies were found in the province over a period of three and a half years. 466 victims were identified as ethnic Baloch, 123 as Pashtuns and 107 from other ethnicities. Meanwhile, 107 bodies remain unidentified. Of the 466 Baloch killed in the province, most were, this is from the State Department report, of the 466 Baloch killed in the province, most were political workers, while the remaining were killed in incidents of targeted killings. Human Rights Watch, a respectable human rights organization, pointed out in 2015 that security forces continue to unlawfully kill and forcibly disappear suspected Baloch militants and opposition activists. The Human Rights, report in, uh, human rights Watch report included the following observations, and this was from 2015. I am going to just keep quoting them without pointing out that each one is a quote until I end the quotations. In January, 13 highly decomposed bodies of ethnic Baloch individuals were found in Khuzdar district. The military muzzled dissenting and critical voices in non-governmental organizations and media. The military continued to exercise sway over the province of Balochistan using torture and arbitrary detention as instruments of coercion. The security forces engaged in extrajudicial killings and enforced disappearances to counter political unrest in the province of Balochistan. Torture of suspects by the police remained rampant. Large numbers of journalists were killed or injured in attacks, most of which remain unsolved. In April 2015, Sabin Mahmood, a prominent Pakistani social and human rights activist, was shot dead shortly after hosting an event on Balochistan's disappeared people in Karachi. In June 2015, Baloch journalist Zafrullah Jatak was gunned down in his home in Balochistan's capital, Quetta. <coughs> Quotes from the Human Rights Watch reports end. Amnesty International's report uh, on Pakistan for 2016-2017 was no different. It pointed out, and I quote, significant levels of armed conflict and political violence, in particular in Balochistan. Uh, it also noted, state and non-state actors continue to harass, threaten, detain, and kill human rights defenders, especially in Balochistan, federally administered tribal areas, and Karachi. The U.S. Department of State Country uh, Report on Human Rights Practices for 2015 and 2016 also said, quote, authorities did not allow international organizations access to detention centers most affected by violence in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, federally administered tribal areas, and Balochistan. While perpetrating and forced disappearances and extrajudicial killings, the government of Pakistan also tried hard to suppress any information about its actions coming out. In the Freedom in the World report for 2016, Freedom House said that the Pakistan government blocked more than 400,000 400, websites in 2016 alone. The provincial government in Balochistan blocked access to a Baloch human rights blog run by journalists. The government blocked several Baloch websites, including the English language website, the Baloch Hal, and the website of Daily Tawar, a Balochistan-based newspaper. Is that the correct pronunciation, yeah. Tawar? Uh, in a report in 2014, the International Crisis Group had pointed out that Pakistan's policy in Balochistan has been one of brutally suppressing the Baloch insurgency instead of trying to understand and accommodate demands for political and economic autonomy. According to the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan, the last few years have seen a rise in ca civilian casualties in Balochistan because of military operations by the security forces. Balochistan comprises 43% of Pakistan's land area and 6% of Pakistan's population. But the representation of the Baloch in Pakistan's institution is not proportional to their number. According to a report by the Pakistan Institute for Peace Studies, as of 2005, and that was, I must admit, several years ago, there was not a single Baloch at the head of the top 200 businesses in Pakistan, not one Baloch ambassador, and only 500 two Baloch were recruited in the army that year. According to reports by Pakistani experts and by the International Crisis Group, as of 
uh, again, 10 years ago, there were only 15,000 Baloch in the 550,000 strong army, excluding paramilitary forces, which is less than 2% of the total size of the armed forces. These injustices need the world's attention. But before they get the world's attention, it might be good if Pakistanis ourselves start paying attention and try to reconcile our uh, angry, upset, and hurt brothers in Balochistan. Balochistan is the cauldron of the worst human rights violations in Pakistan, which does not have a good track record of upholding human rights in general. Its oppression of religious minorities, including Christians and Ahmadis, is widely recognized. In recent years, Hazara Shias in Balochistan and Shias in Parachinar in the federally administered tribal areas have also come under attack and subjected to ethnic cleansing to facilitate militant operations in their traditional areas by Afghan Taliban and the notorious Haqqani network. We should not let Balochistan become a battleground for rival external powers. The people of Balochistan deserve better than being oppressed by Rawalpindi and Islamabad or being used as pawns in international great games. Instead of attacking and destroying the Baluch, or for that matter, the Sindhis, the Pashtun or the Mahajirs, the Pakistani military establishment should focus on eliminating safe havens for international terrorists like Al-Qaeda, ISIS and the Afghan and Pakistani Taliban. I join all of you in recognizing the sacrifice of the Baloch people. And I pray that may the sacrifice of thousands of Baloch men and women bear fruit and Baluchistan get justice. And not only Baluchistan, but all of Pakistan find peace, the peace that comes from being a democracy that respects its people rather than being a militarist regime that tries to solve disputes in the region with force. Thank you all very much. Thank you.